Aloha everyone. In this video, we're gonna talk about Maui's water supply and how finding a sustainable alternative source of clean, fresh water could help solve the well-documented housing crisis that we've had on Maui for many years. And that's been amplified by the tragic wildfire in Lahaina. But before I get started, let me just say that this video is going to be different than anything I've produced on the channel so far. I am stepping out of my comfort zone to bring fresh ideas that will hopefully spark constructive conversations from people who know a lot more about this subject than I do. I don't claim to be an expert in any way, and it's my intention to simply open up the dialogue about a critical topic to see if we can all come together to fix our housing crisis with a solution that's both positive for all the people of Maui and sustainable in the long run. So let's jump right into it. Now, to outsiders, the solution to a shortage of housing probably seems obvious. Most people would say, why don't they just build more homes? Well, it isn't necessarily that simple. On Maui's west side in particular, there isn't enough clean groundwater to support construction of more neighborhoods and housing developments. The Lahaina Fire highlighted the mismanagement of Maui's water resources over the course of many decades. Lahaina was actually once considered the Venice of the Pacific with abundant freshwater supplies and freshwater ponds. But at the time of the fire, Lahaina and the land surrounding it was incredibly dry. So history tells us that water had originally been diverted from Lahaina to support large plantations and after the plantations ceased operation, the water diversion continued to supply new developments in hotel and resort areas. But what if these new developments could create their own supply of clean water and allow the natural groundwater to be returned to the people of Maui as a public resource? Now, since clean groundwater is a finite resource and already on short supply, new affordable housing projects have also struggled, struggled to get the green light to start building. Here's a news article from earlier this year that discusses how the biggest affordable housing project in decades on Maui called Pulelehua and is located near Lahaina simply does not have enough water available to support the new community. So it seems to me that the root of our housing crisis is actually a water crisis. And this got me thinking. With all the technology available to us in today's modern world, there must be a solution for, for producing clean water without putting further strain on groundwater supply. And as I started to do just some basic research, it became clear that the shortage of clean water is not just a problem on Maui, it's a global issue. And there are some very smart people who are already engineering sustainable solutions. Earth is 70% water by surface area. Um, and, but you can't uh, drink that. But de yeah, de desalination is absurdly cheap. Why don't we do it then? We do it. It is done. You have a lot of free time. It is done. <laughs> there is a lot of desalination done. Okay, uh, but there's but, plenty of water. This is not an issue. I want to be clear. All right. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't claim to be an expert on this topic by any means. But after doing just a few hours of research, it looks like there are several technologies that are helping to solve the world's clean water problem. One solution being desalination of ocean water or brackish groundwater. And another solution turns the water vapor that's abundantly available in the air around us into clean, fresh drinking water. Now, both of these systems come with their own challenges and both have been criticized in the past for excessive energy consumption. But the evolution of solar panels have minimized and in some cases eliminated the need for any outside energy source. Here's a video from just one of many companies that specializes in solar-powered desalination plants. Islands and coastal areas in particular are at the forefront of climate change. Droughts happen more frequently and water sources are drying up. The key to unlocking more fresh water lies in the sea. The process of desalination is an expensive exercise as much energy is needed and energy rates are high. We thought, why not use the elements in our favor? Plenty of sunshine, an abundance of seawater, but not a drop to drink. Combining the power of the sea and the sun 
Elemental Water Makers enables reliable access to clean water from unlimited resources. Solar Powered Desalination provides independence and resilience. Let's take a look at how it works. Access to seawater or brackish water is arranged through a well or an open intake. The larger particles in the water are first captured using pre-filtration. Then, desalination takes place using reverse osmosis membranes. The fresh water can be remineralized for drinking water purposes. It's temporarily stored in a reservoir, ready to be used at will. An inline filter is included before the point of use to ensure the water's quality. All the required energy comes from the sun. The amount of energy we need is reduced by 75% using energy recovery technology. This technology uses the residual energy of the saltier water, leaving the reverse osmosis membranes. This means we can do with four times less solar panels. To cope with the fluctuations of the sun by passing clouds, a minimum amount of batteries is used. They are maintenance-free and suitable for warm tropical climates. Before shutting down at night and during longer standstills, the membranes are automatically flushed with fresh water to avoid frequent replacement. The solution comes as a hybrid, so it's possible to double the water production at night by grid or a generator. The units are ideal for remote applications as they are compact, plug and play, and easy to operate. They can be delivered in a small container ready to be put in operation. Maintenance is limited through automation and the use of highly durable components. The water quality is constantly observed and remote monitoring and control is included for stress-free operation. Coastal communities, properties, resorts, municipalities and industries can now get access to affordable clean water for generations to come. That video is around five years old already and probably somewhat outdated. Today, there are even more efficient solutions coming available. Now, another challenge with desalination is managing the salty brine water that is a byproduct of the process. Returning the water with a higher concentration of salt can have environmental impacts. Well, there is a research group at MIT that might have already found an effective solution to that problem. What's more, because the device is tilted, it also means that saltier water starts to sink to the bottom because it's denser. This naturally flushes out salty water from each layer before it can become hypersaline and damaging to the local ecosystem, solving yet another problem. Okay, now moving on to another possible solution, which is the process of turning the atmosphere's water vapor that exists in the air around us into clean drinking water. This can also be done using solar power and that does not produce any salty brine water that the desalination plant process does. Here's just one example of a company that offers what they call hydro panels that are equipped with their own solar panels and make clean, safe drinking water without the need for any electrical hookups or infrastructure. So the hydro panel on, on its surface looks almost like a solar panel. Um, it's four feet by eight feet in dimension and it has some depth to it. And what it does is it uses the, the power of the sun, there's photovoltaics in the center of the panel to power all our electronics and the fans. And what that power does is it pulls air in from the, the environment around the panel. And there's a hygroscopic material, which is a very absorbent material. So similar to if you were to imagine a salt shaker and you put rice in that salt shaker, that rice will absorb the moisture in the air, keeping your salt crystals in crystallized form. So think of it like that um, it, with a nanomaterial um, at scale. And that collects the water vapor and then we condense it out and in that condensing process, turns into liquid water. And once it's turned into liquid water, we then mineralize it with calcium and magnesium for, uh, for human health, for absorbability of that water, and then for great taste. Now, the big question is, could these solutions work for Maui? Well, they are already being used all over the world and are in several similar island nations. Islands like Malta, the Bahamas, and the Maldives get most of their water from desalination. Worldwide, one study estimates that the daily production of fresh water from the ocean to be around 95 million meters cubed, 
That's enough to fill the Great Pyramid of Giza around 36 times every day. Look, if they can do it, I'm sure we can do it even better here on Maui because of all the resources that are available to us. This could be an opportunity for Maui to become a leader in sustainable freshwater solutions to help solve our housing shortage and contribute to the transition to a more eco-friendly tourism that most people on Maui desire. I'll say it one more time. I don't claim to be an expert in water treatment. I definitely don't have all the answers, and I'm sure there are still issues that need to be worked out in order to make any of these clean water options work on Maui. I encourage everyone to do their own research. Don't just take my word for it. But I am somewhat surprised that no one seems to be talking about the modern water solutions that are emerging. Instead of, or at least in addition to, all the discussions about taking away individual property rights as the only possible solution to solve our housing crisis. I understand that ancient wisdom tells us that clean water in Hawaii is a finite resource and new technology can be scary because it does come with uncertainty. But I think it's important to remember that most things that we now consider ancient wisdom was at some point in history considered a new technology. So why move backwards with a scarcity mindset when we could move forward into a more abundant future? Now, all of that being said, I'm really curious to hear what all of you think about this topic. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think either of these clean water solutions are feasible here in Hawaii? And would you be in favor of more housing developments on Maui if we had an abundant supply of clean water? Or maybe you have other ideas that you think might work better. If so, share it in the comment section because I genuinely would like to hear about it. And I hope this video sparks constructive conversations on solutions to our housing crisis and clean water debate. Anyways, that's all for this video. Please share the video with anyone you know that cares about Maui and its people. Hit the like button and subscribe for more updates. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Aloha.